Miss Ross? No. Oh, okay. We, we can start. Um, first things first, any issues with our, our juror from the state? Not from the state. Any from the defense? Okay, any issues we need to address before we bring them out? here in the front row. Thank you for sure. Please be seated. Let both sides approach for a moment. yet. Have you followed my instructions, not talked about the case among yourselves or with anybody else, or looked up any of the people or places involved? Even if you did so inadvertently, now would be the time to raise your hand and let me know. For the record, no jurors lifted their hand. Next witness. Uh, state calls Curtis Wright. swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do, so I'll be done. Thank you. I'm going to put the chair forward. Speak as soon as you can Okay. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Can you please state your full name for the record? It's Curtis Wayne Wright. Do you hear? Junior? Yes. And can you please spell your last name? W-R-I-G-H-T. And you're a little soft-spoken, so can you lean forward as best you can? I don't know if that's a movable mic up there. Maybe move a little closer. Okay. Yeah. I'll do as you want. Sure. Right. Thank you. This better. Okay. Mr. Wright, who killed Dr. Teresa Severs? Uh, I did. Jimmy Rogers. All right. Let's go 
back to the end, or go back to the beginning. Mr. Wright, where were you born? St. Louis, Missouri. How old are you, sir? 51. 51? What's your education? Your educational level? College. Did you finish college? No, I didn't. How far did you get? I didn't do, I wasn't in a uh, degree program, so I was taking independent classes, so I, I'm not really sure how to answer that. Okay. So you never actually uh, got far enough along to earn a college degree, sir? No, the, uh, the vocation that I ended up deciding to go into at the time didn't have a degree. Do you have any family? I do. Um, let's start first with, are you married? I am. Um, how long have you been married? Six years. When did you get married? I'm sorry, five. Five years? When did you get married? May 2nd, uh, 2015. So just over, it's, it's 2019 now, so just over four years? Yes, sorry. Was that your first marriage? No. How many times have you been married? Uh, three. Three times? Yes. Do you have any children? I do. How many? <laughs> three. A little nervous? I am a little hoarse, sorry. Let's talk a little bit about your past, Mr. Wright. Have you ever been convicted of a felony? I have. How many times? Um, I, I'm not sure exactly. I, I have three uh, drug possession charges, and then there was another one that had to do with it. It was part of the same thing. Three or four times? Uh, yeah, I, I'm not positive of the number, but yeah. Definitely more than one? Yes. And five or less? Yes. You said just now that you and Jimmy Rogers killed Teresa Severs. Is that what you're in custody for right now? Yes, it is. Mr. Wright, did you enter a uh, substantial assistance plea agreement with the state of Florida regarding your testimony? Yes, I did. And did you re are, are you expecting to re receive some benefit from the state of Florida in exchange for your testimony? Um, I, I uh, agreed to a 25-year sentence. Have you been sentenced yet? No. Is your sentence contingent upon anything? Me telling the truth. What happens to that sentence if you don't tell the truth? Uh, it, it, it goes away. Um, I know the maximum for what the charge is that I'm is a life, so I would assume that I would be put away for the rest of my life. Now, um, Mr. Mr. Wright, let's go back to July of um, 2015. Did you receive some visits from members of law enforcement? Actually, we'll say between July and uh, September, October 2015. Did you receive some visits from law enforcement uh, to get some information from you about Dr. Seaver's death? Uh, yes. In Missouri? Yes. I'm sorry. I, I'm very bad with time no problem. frames. And, and um, did you provide prior recorded statements to law enforcement? Yes. And you provided those prior statements to law enforcement regarding this case, the case involving the death of Dr. Seavers? Yes, I did. Did you tell them the truth? No. Why didn't you? I, 
I was trying to I was trying to protect myself and my co-defendants. Uh, tried to derail them on their investigation. When you said you were trying to protect yourself and your co-defendants, who were your co-defendants? Uh, Jimmy Rogers and Mark Severs. So you lied to law enforcement to evade arrest? Attempted to, yes. Well, you didn't attempt to lie. You did lie, right? Attempted to not get arrested. And that part didn't work. Right. <coughs> so then after you got arrested, you hired counsel? Yes. And at some point, did you make a, a decision to make a proffer to the state about what you might testify to in this case? I, I did. Um, I actually want to, on the last question that you asked me, I actually hired counsel in Missouri prior to being arrested. And then when you, when you got to Florida, you obtained counsel in Florida? Yes. Okay, and we'll talk about, we're, I'm specifically referring, thanks for correcting me, I'm specifically referring to your Florida counsel. And um, made a decision um, to uh, engage the state or brought proffer. Yes. And was that the first time you and I met? Yes, I believe it was. And at some point uh, during that proffer, we had a discussion about your involvement in this. I apologize, uh, Judge. Apparently, there was a distraction in the courtroom. I'll ask everybody to turn off any electronic devices that you have in the courtroom, or you'll have to remove yourself. You may continue. So, um, I think I, I was asking whether that proffer was the first time you and I had ever met. Yes, I believe it was. And the purpose, what was the purpose of that proffer? To uh, try to work out, uh, see if there was an arrangement that we could make that I could offer information to you that would help. So you wanted to offer information and, and in exchange for us possibly making it offering to make a deal with you? Yes, possibility. Did you tell the truth in the proffer? Not all of it. You started out telling untruths. Well, I started out telling the truth in the middle, varied a little, got off, and then at the end I corrected those. Uh, did you correct that on your own, or did somebody help you make that correction? Um, we took a break. I spoke to my counsel, and I prayed. Now, at the time you were giving that proffer, you had been arrested. Yes. Um, you were actually in jail awaiting your trial on the charges, right? Yes. And uh, during that uh, meeting that you had with your counsel, did you uh, get educated on what the purpose of the proffer was? Yes. <clears throat> After that meeting with, the, uh, with your counsel, did you tell the truth in the proffer? Yes, uh, I did. And then, um, you don't know, you probably don't know that there were discussions, but at some point did the state then make you the 25-year offer? Yes, sometime after that. And um, after, did you eventually accept the offer? I did. And then provide a sworn statement to the state? Yes. Did you tell the truth then? Yes.
Mr. Wright, do you know Mark Severs? I do. How do you know him? We've been friends since high school. And so in high school, you were somewhere between the ages of 14 and 18? Yes, I, I can't remember if it was ninth or 10th grade that we met, but um, we've maintained a friendship throughout the years. How did you meet? Uh, our girlfriends were friends. I believe that's how we originally got. And these were high school girlfriends? Yes. How would you describe your relationship with Mr. Stevers? Uh, well, it's it's been a long period of time. Do you you mean currently or? I wouldn't say it. I'm guessing you wouldn't. Not currently. But well, I would say before you got arrested. Yes, that's what I meant. How would you describe your relationship with Mr. Severs? Uh, we were we were good friends. You know, we've been through a lot together over the years. Did you have the kind of friendship with Miss? with Mr. Severs, where you would uh, confide in him? Yeah, sometimes. Uh, Mark's personality, he's, he's a pretty guarded person. Um, so there were periods when there was very little really personal stuff talked about, but there was, and uh, I, I knew that I could talk to him and he could talk to me. And will the two of you keep secrets for one another? Did you? I'm sorry. Did you say for or from? It would be. Well, I guess it could be. It could be either way. But the question was, would the two of you keep secrets for one another? So, would you keep a secret for Mr. Severs, and would he keep one for you? Yes. So you had you had the kind of relationship with Mr. Severs, where you could tell him something in confidence and not expect to hear it from somebody else. Yes. And Mr. Severs could tell you something in confidence and you wouldn't tell somebody else. Yes. Did you know Mr. Severs' family? Yes. His wife? Yes. Dr. Severs? Yes. Had you met her before? Uh, I met her when at their wedding. Um, Mark is from St. Louis also. Um, so when he moved down to Florida, and I met her at the wedding. And then I didn't see her again for 10 years or at least. So I didn't have a relationship with her, a friendship with her. But, I, yeah, we had met. I knew who she was. Um. So, uh, Mr. Severs invited you to the wedding between him and Dr. Severs? Yes. Did you ever have an opportunity to meet the rest of the Severs family? Yes. The two daughters? Did you meet them? Josie and Carmi, yes. Did you ever have an opportunity to spend time with the Severs family? Yes. Um, the majority of the time that I spent with the family was with Mark and the girls. Um, the majority of, well, all but one time that I can think of uh, that I was with them, uh, Teresa wasn't. Now, at some point, um, I guess the, the, the que I guess the next question would be: You said that you were very close friends. Did your friendship with, with Mr. Seaver stay uh, consistent um, from the time you met? Well, our friendship stayed consistent. Uh, the level of interaction. that you got married and started a family and he got married and started his family have an effect on your friendship? 
I don't think that's what the effect, uh, affected it. I think it was the him in Florida and me in St. Louis was what really affected it. Uh, we got married almost the same time, and we had our our kids at the same time within a few months of each other. So even though you still considered Mr. Severs a close friend, you weren't in contact as much as you used to be. Right. We talked on the phone occasionally. Um, he would come into town, and he always had the girls with him when he came into town, and we'd always get together. Uh, whenever I'd come to Florida, I would, you know, I, I would try to spend time with him too. Um, at some point, did you also develop a um, business relationship with Mark Severs? Yes. And what was the, um, with reference to the Severs medical practice, what was the nature of the business relationship with Mark Severs? Uh, their, their medical practice, uh, you know, their, their software that they use f to, for the patient management system, uh, they have support for that uh, and the company that was providing their technical support they weren't happy with um, i was mark asked me if i could help him uh, because that was something that i have done a lot of in my past uh, so I, I i i told him that i would help him and i did uh, eventually they got rid of the other company completely and i officially took it over and so you used to, you had some experience doing tech support, uh, computer services in the past? Yes. And when did this business relationship with Mark Severs and the Severs medical practice start, if you can recall? I'm not sure exactly. I think it was, it's not from now, but prior to 2015, I think it was about three years that for, and uh, did you perform services, the computer support services, for the Severs medical practice for free? I did it first. Um, Mark insisted that if I was going to do it, that he, he wanted it to be compensated. So. And so at some point you started uh, being paid to do the work for the Severs practice? Yes. Um, did... You received payments from Mark Severs, or did you receive payments from the medical practice? I think all of the payments came through the business, but they may not have. Our agreement wasn't in writing; it wasn't a contract. It was it was verbal. Well, a verbal agreement can be a contract too, right? No. Yes, I mean, formal is what I meant. In fact, was there an agreement between you and Mr. Severs on how much you were going to get paid to perform the computer work for the medical practice? Yeah, the agreement was about $100 a month. So about $1,200 a year? Yes. Do you know Jimmy Rogers? I do. How do you know him? We're also friends. Are you and Jimmy Rogers the same, have the same kind of friendship as you and Mark Severs? No. Was your friendship with Jimmy Rogers closer or less close than the friendship you had with Mark Severs? I, I was, personally, I was closer to Mark. Uh, Jimmy and I had a more, uh, more steady, uh, I guess, level of friendship. We, we talked and saw each other more. And how far did, um, how, how, well, how far, let me ask a better question. Uh, did uh, Mr. Rogers live in Missouri with you as well? He did. And so, was it because he was, he was, did he live in the same county as you? I think it was a different county, but it was, it was just below me. Yeah, we were close together. You were nearby? Yeah. Would that make it easier for the two of you to have a, a friendship? Uh, it made it more convenient for us to get together. How did 
did you meet Jimmy Rogers? Well, actually, no. Let me strike that question. Were you and Jimmy Rogers friends? Yes, I believe so. Would you confide in Mr. Rogers? Not in the same kinds of things that I would with Mark. And that's because, as you told us uh, earlier, you were closer with Mark Severs than you were with Jimmy Rogers. Yeah, I think that kind of relationship takes time to, to build. Now, you said earlier that you were, uh, what, 51? Yes. Um, is Mr. Rogers also 51? No. A little younger than you? Uh, a little bit. Back in, um, around the time of May of 2015, did Mr. Rogers have a girlfriend? Yes. Had you met her? You said May, right? In May, around, yeah, around May of 20, yes. 2015? Had you met his girlfriend? Yes. Did you know who she was? Yes. What was her name? Taylor Schumacher. I think you told me a minute ago that you've been married three times. Yes. Is it your current marriage your third marriage, or is it your fourth marriage? No, it's my third. Okay. And when did that marriage start? Uh, May 2nd. Of 2015? Yes, I'm sorry. And um, did you actually have a wedding? Yes. And uh, what kind of... What kind of wedding was it? Was was it one of those big formal weddings with uh, big gowns and tuxedos, or was it a less formal wedding? It was less formal. Uh, we actually had an outdoor wedding at a park. And uh, did you uh, invite your longtime friend, Mark Severs, to come to your wedding? Yes. Now, was he just supposed to come to the wedding, or did he have any specific duties at the wedding? I say, actually, we, I invited the family, so, but Mark's the one that came up. Uh, and yes, he was, I had, I had two best men. He was one of them. So, Mr. Mark Severs was the best man at your wedding? Yes. And, and thanks for correcting me. You, you, you invited the Severs family to come to the wedding. Yes. I had sent an invitation. Um, do you know, um, so did, did Mark Severs actually come to um, Missouri for the wedding? Yes, he did. And back then, what part of uh, Missouri did you live in? Uh, Hillsboro. And Hillsboro is a city? Yeah, if you want to call it a city, yeah. It's actually the county seat, but it's very small. And what county is it in? Jefferson County. And as is, as, as is customary uh, with a wedding, uh, were there any associated wedding festivities uh, that weekend for your wedding? Yes. And what kind of festivities were there? We all got together the day before the wedding at my house, and we had a cookout. And then that evening, we had a combined bachelor-bachelorette party, but we all went out together um, to a karaoke bar. And when you say we, who is, who, uh, when you say we, who is we? Uh, well, let me ask just, you, just let me ask, a, a let me group of friends and ask you a smarter question because that wasn't a very smart question. When you say we, uh, up to this point, we've talked about yourself, we've talked about Mark Severs, we've talked about Jimmy Rogers, and we've talked about Taylor Showmaker. Yes. Um, were any of them present at the wedding festivities? All of them.
Uh, you mentioned that there was a cookout at your house. Yes. Were uh, Mr. Rogers, Ms. Taylor, Mr. Severich present there? Yes. To your knowledge, had, had Mr. Severs and Mr. Rogers ever met before? No, they had not actually met prior to that. Did you uh, did you ever see them associate or exchange pleasantries during the wedding festivities? Uh, there was a lot going on. I, I think everybody talked to everybody, so specifically I can't remember an actual conversation. But Well, how big was this cookout? Uh, ten people. So it wasn't like hundreds of people? No. Okay. And then you said that um, there was a... Um... Yes. And uh, you said something about going out. What do you mean? What did you mean when you say you went out and had the combined bachelor, bachelorette party? It was. I could be missing a person or two, but I believe it was the same group that was at the house. We all went out. Uh, the. Was it to like a uh, yeah, establishment we, of some kind? It, yes, it was a karaoke bar. Um, my wife sings. And. Um, and I'm, so I'm guessing if the, if you were at a karaoke bar, the, the genre uh, sounds like it describes what y'all were doing there, singing and drinking. Yes. And was Mr. Rogers there? Yes. Was Mr. Severs there? He was. Was Miss um, Showmaker there? Yes. Uh. If I can add something to that. Well, let me, let me just ask you the, let me just ask you another question. Okay. Okay. So how soon after the, um, the wedding festivities, the bachelor bachelorette party, how soon after that was the actual wedding? It was the next morning. Uh, that same group of people, we all stayed at my house that night so that we could all be together in the morning. Uh, the wedding was started at noon, so, and because it was in the park, there was a lot of things that had to be set up. Um, I got chairs and tables from our church, and uh, we had bought the meat through a friend of mine's uh, little grocery store, and uh, so that had to be picked up. There was, you know, things that needed to be done. We had planned on meeting back over at the bar. I mean, I'm sorry, at the uh, park about 9 o'clock that morning. Okay, and so let me back up to the spending the night at your apart at your at your place. Yes. Um, Mr. Rogers spent the night. Yes. At your at your place. Miss Miss Showmaker spent the night as well. Yes. And Mr. Seifers spent the night. Yes. Did Mr. Seifers stay at your place during his entire visit in Hillsboro? Or Jefferson County, Missouri during that time? No. He stayed somewhere else? Yes. Where did he stay? Um, he, I'm not sure exactly what day he flew in, but I know that the, the entire day before we got together, um, he spent at his, uh, he's, he, he owns a condominium up there, and that he's had rented out. Um, still has a lot of things stored in the garage uh, from life. <laughs> so... So if your if your wedding was was uh, you said May second yes and then so that means that the festivities would have been on May first yes Friday night and so if it was the day before the festivities it would have been what there's thirty days in April is it thirty or thirty one days in April I think it's thirty days in April it would have been April thirtieth whatever the last day in April is okay okay. So I looked at a calendar before I asked that question. Um, during the um, when you when everybody spent the night at your place, the night before the wedding, did uh, Miss Showmaker, Mr. Rogers, and Mr. Severs appear to associate at all? Have any discussion? Um. Yeah, I mean, everybody was talking, so. 
Uh, you didn't observe a friendship develop between Mr. Seavers and Mr. Rogers during that weekend, though, did you? No. At some point um, during the weekend uh, festivities, did Mr. Seavers approach you about something? Yes. And how did he approach you? Uh, well, right before he came into town, he sent me a text message uh, telling me that he had something personal that he wanted to talk to me about. Uh, he didn't tell me what it was, but he said that he'd hoped that we could have some time to talk while he was in town. Uh, so. And let me let me stop there, and let me let me back up for a minute. At the beginning of our discussion, you told me that you and bless you and Jimmy Ray Rogers killed Dr. Seavers. Yes. But you also mentioned that Mr. Seavers, Mr. Seavers was a co-defendant. Yes. Did Dr. Seavers die as a, result, uh, uh, as a result of something Mr. Seavers did? Uh, yeah, the, he approached me and told me that he needed to have his wife killed. And Overruled. You can approach. State. May I proceed? Yes, sir. All right, so did, um, did Mr. Seavers, I think where we were was I was asking if Mr. Seavers asked to speak with you at the wedding. Yeah, the night before the wedding, yes. And how did he, how did he ask to speak with you? 
Uh, well, he sent me a text message before he came in town to let me know that he wanted to talk to me. Uh, once he got to the house, uh, the day before the wedding, when when we all had our get together at the house. But, and let me before we get to the day before the wedding, let me back up to the text message, okay? Okay. In the text message that he sent you, did he tell you why he wanted to speak to you? He just said it was something personal, but I, I can't remember the way it was worded. But. Now, um, did he ever actually get an opportunity to speak with you? Yes. And you started to tell us about the, the next day at, at the house. Yes. He, did he speak to you then? Yeah, at some point after he got to the house, uh, he asked me if, if we could go somewhere and talk privately. Uh, we went to we went back to my bedroom and closed the door so that we could we could have some privacy. So even though you had people visiting um, and celebrating you and Mrs. Wright getting married, the two of you went off on your own to talk about whatever it was Mr. Severs wanted to talk to you about. Yes. Did that discussion between you and Mr. Severs, was that the beginning of, a, of an agreement between you and Mr. Severs to result in the death of Dr. Severs? I'm not sure how to answer that, but it, yes or it no? was the beginning of the conversations that led to to the agreement. So that discussion, it's safe to say, began a series of discussions between you and Mr. Severs that resulted in the death of Dr. Severs. Yes. At some point, was there an agreement between you and Mr. Severs? Was there an agreement between you and Mr. Severs to cause the death of Dr. Teresa Severs? Did you say at that point? At some point. Yes. Was there ever an agreement between you and Jimmy Rogers to call the, cause the death of Dr. Severs? Yes. And did you make that agreement with Jimmy Rogers as a result of your discussions with Mark Severs? Yes. So going back to, um, getting back to your wedding, or your wedding weekend, you, so you've got, you've got folks over at your house, you're having a party, and you said you and Mr. Severs were, were somewhere else in the house. Yes, in the Where bedroom. In the bedroom. My bedroom, specifically. Or are. Two of you? Yes. And did Mr. Severs tell you what he wanted to talk to you about? Yes. What did he tell you? What did he tell you he wanted to know? Well, he just he wanted he wanted to uh, tell me that that, uh, that he and Teresa were having problems that uh, Teresa was having an affair and that uh, uh, talked about some financial problems they were having as well. Um, talked you know, told me that he thought that they may have to file bankruptcy, and I, I just, I get, my impression is that he didn't really have anybody else he could talk to, so. Uh, what was his demeanor like as he was telling you about these problems he was having at home? How did he appear? Overruled. How did he appear as he was telling you about his problems at home? Uh, sincere. I mean, he was not his normal upbeat self. So, um, when your friend of uh, so many years was telling you that he was having these problems at home, did you believe what he was telling you? Yes. What else did he tell you during that meeting between the two of you in the bedroom at, at your home? Um, besides the problems that they were having, uh, he told me that 
Mark likes to use the hypothetical situations when he wants to say something without. Overruled. So he brought up a hypothetical. Let me, let me stop and, and ask the question. Ask the question again so we can. So let me back up. I think the question I, what I was asking was, what was what was it, Mr. Sievers, after he told you he was having problems at home, what else did he ask you for? What else did he tell you? He told me that he used the hypothetical situation as a as a as a way to bring it up. But he said that if if a hypo I'm sorry if a hypothetical situation existed where uh, someone's children were going to be taken away and that they were in danger, um, that if I knew somebody that that could help him. So just to be clear, he asked you. Hypothetically, if there was somebody whose uh, children were going to be take, who were going to be taken away, did you, Mr. Mr. Wright, know somebody who could help him? Yes. Help him how? He didn't say specifically, but my take on it was, you know, maybe go rough this guy up or something, run him off. And did he actually ask you to rough up anybody? He just said, take care of it or help him. So it, our conversation got interrupted right about that point. So it wasn't a full conversation. So at that conversation, he gave you this hypothetical situation, but he didn't yet ask you to do something. Right, not directly. And how did your, uh, you said your conversation got interrupted. How did it get, it, how did it get interrupted? Uh, people are wondering where we went because we disappeared. Went back out and joined the party. And so when you say people started wondering where you went, it was all of your guests that were there at your, at your, your party that night. Yes. Or that day. Yeah, this all happened during like an afternoon uh, and went into the evening. So was that the last time you talked to Mr. Seavers about whatever his problems might have been at home, no. hypothetically? No. There was, was there another discussion? Yes. Um, when? The next, the next morning when we all were at the park getting ready. Uh, Mark and I ended up being, had some time alone again. Uh, I think we were actually getting dressed or something, but. Uh, Where did you get dressed? There's like a building there at, at the park. Um, I think the restrooms are in that building, but it's also got some other stuff in it. Uh, it wasn't just a bathroom. But, uh, but we were getting dressed or uh, getting ready, and uh, he brought it back up again. So, on the day of your wedding, while you're getting ready for your wedding, Mr. Severs wanted to talk to you again about whatever his problems were. Yes, prior to the ceremony, right. If I could uh, ask Madam Clerk to assist me, please, with state's exhibit number 74A through E. You can approach. Yes. I'm going to show you what's been previously entered into evidence as Exhibit 74A. Do you recognize that? Yes. What is it? Uh, that's a picture of 
I think, the exact situation I was just talking about. I have the two of you getting dressed at your wedding? Yeah, unless it's one of us looking in a mirror. <laughs> two of you look pretty close. Uh, <clears throat> two of you look, uh, I'm not going to say look alike, but uh, you look very similar in that picture. Yes. It almost does look like a mirror, doesn't it? Which one is you and which one is Mr. Seavers? I think I'm the one on the right. Okay, so the one with his tie getting tied is you? Yes. And so the one tying your tie is Mark Seavers? Yes. Is that a striped tie around my neck? Yeah, it looks like a striped tie there. Yeah, that's me then. I can show you the picture a little no, that's, closer so that's you can it. see. Yeah, that's me. That's you with the tie on? Yes. We were dressed identical except for the tie. That's... Now you said there were some folks at your wedding. <laughs> Can you see who these two people are? Can you see them? Uh, Zoom it in for you. Yes. That's Jimmy Rogers and Taylor Schumacher. And this picture is also taken at your wedding? Yeah, it looks like that's taken at the park. So, you're in that uh, little room in the park, getting dressed for your wedding, and Mr. Severs wants to talk to you again. What did he tell you? Uh, that morning, uh, I don't, I don't know if I made that clear or not. But the, the the night before, when we talked, he he told me that she was having an affair, but he didn't actually tell me she was leaving him. So. Um, so that next morning when the conversation continued, uh, it went more into depth. He actually told me that she was leaving him for another doctor, I think is what he said there. It was, who he was. Um, did he tell you a name? I, I don't know. I don't remember if he did. Did you know who he was talking about, who this person was that she was supposedly having an affair with? No. I think he said that it was somebody that she met at a conference or something. And was he still speaking hypothetically about something happening? No. What did he? Uh, what else did he tell you while speaking at the park, specifically at the park? Well, he told me that she was, she was, basically that the 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 decision had been made that they. mentioned earlier Josie and Carmi. So Mr. Severs was telling you that Dr. Severs was going to leave him and take and take his daughters. Yes. When he told you this, did you believe him? Yeah, Mark doesn't joke around about things like that. Especially not with his girls. What else did you discuss with him during this particular discussion at the park, if anything? Um, there was a, there was some like options thrown out there, uh, a, a couple things. Some of I get because it was one conversation. Sometimes I get mixed up on the details between part A and part B, but same conversation, and it was all it's all true. But, uh, but uh, I had mentioned that you know about fighting her for custody legally fighting her um, he said he didn't have the finances to do that um, that there's no way that he could he could get keep the girls from their mother um, um, and there somewhere he also mentioned counseling and he said I th 
I think he said they had already done counseling or they had already talked about it. Um, okay, so um, that sounds like some reasonable advice from a friend. Uh, fight, you know, do counseling or, or have a fight for custody of your children. That sounds reasonable. I thought so. Did uh, Mr. Seavers agree to take your advice? Um, well, he said he couldn't fight her financially and that the counseling didn't work out. Um. And um, what else did he tell you while at the park? Um, he said he told me that that not only was she taking them, but they were they were going to be in danger. Um, that he without him there to protect them. Uh, there was multiple times that we discussed this danger that that they were in, um, but he never he never told me specifically what it was. But I know Mark, and you know when when Mark says something like that, it's He's serious. So, uh, Mr. Seavers uh, gave you the impression when you say they were going to be in danger. I'm sorry. Was it the 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 daughters, Josie and Carmi, or was it Josie, Carmi, and Dr. Seavers? No, just the just the girls, the 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 children. Did he ask you to do anything during this discussion at the park? It seems like he, he asked me again about if I knew somebody that might be able to, to help him out with it. Again, the discussion got interrupted right about that point, uh, so it didn't it didn't wrap up on a on a, a finished note. Oh, what kind <laughs> of um, did he tell you? What I mean, was he asking for help getting marriage counseling? Was he asking for help getting legal representation for a custody battle? Uh, what kind of help? Was he asking? Did he ask for the name of a lawyer? What was he asking for? Uh, he was asking for somebody to pay this guy a visit. The guy who Dr. Severs was having the affair with. Was he having an affair with? Yes. And I'm guessing it, was, it wouldn't have been a friendly visit. No. All right. So, at some point, did the discussion in the uh, in the in the room in the the men's room or whatever this room was where you and Mr. Severs were, did that discussion end? Yeah, because it got interrupted again. Uh, I'm guessing at this point now, since the two of you are getting dressed, apparently getting dressed, there were f f wedding associated activities about to begin. Um, yeah, it was getting close. The, uh, we had, the chairs were there and the things were getting set up. Uh, the organization part of trying to make it all happen because we got married in the gazebo so that had to be decorated and things we had a lot of chairs there was a lot of people there um, so they uh, well let me let me stop you and ask you who did the decorating uh, friends uh, you didn't hire a company to come and do the decorating no no kind of try to keep costs down we pulled everybody together and everybody joined in uh, her friends helped with more of the decorating, mine helped more with setting things up. Uh, and when you say her friends, you mean you mean I'm your sorry. wife? I'm sorry, yes, Angie. Angie Wright? Yes. Who did the catering? We did. <laughs> and when you say we, you mean you and Mrs. Wright? Yes. Um, I have a friend. Is this what you're asking me? I'm sorry. I'm um, just, I, okay. the, I, the how it came was, about. How did y'all get food for the wedding? Okay. Um, I have a friend who owns a, a small like grocery mart with a deli in it. Um, he let me use his, his wholesale food account to, to buy the, to buy the, everything that we needed. Um, he didn't buy it for us. I bought it just using his, his wholesale account. Um, he also was nice enough to let me store these boxes of meat, um, we had multiple cases of hot dogs and hamburgers and all, you know whatever else we were going to eat. So he let us keep it in his cooler as well as let us buy it through him. And 
kind of cooler did he, did he have that it would, that enabled you to be able to store boxes of meat, hot dogs, burgers, and other stuff in it? It was a big walk-in cooler like a restaurant has. Um, I think one the front side of it is actually where you open the doors to get soda and stuff out of, and then the back is all you know, storage. And um, is, it, is this cooler located in some kind of a business? Yes, it's inside of his the his little mart, uh, his little store. It's uh, called Neighborhood Grocery. Is is the actual name of the store? So since he's a grocer, he uh, had access to uh, being, able, being able to buy food at, at wholesale. Yes. And he let you benefit from his wholesale discount. Yeah, he gave me his card and told me to go get whatever I needed. We we paid for it then. Is I live out in the country, so near to me is <laughs> probably different than near to most people. Uh, well, let me, it's about let me, 20 minutes. And uh, let me, so. by Florida standards, let me, let me back up and, and clarify the, my use of the word near. Can you walk from neighborhood, can you, is it a short walk from neighborhood grocery to the park where your wedding was? No. Okay. It was about a 20 minute drive. Uh, and uh, by Hillsborough standards, a 20-minute drive, drive is near. It's almost to the fast, nearest fast food restaurant. Um, so it, the food that was in your friend's cooler was supposed to be used in your wedding at the park. Yes. How was the food going to get from the wedding to the park? Uh, when we left the house that morning. Or from uh, the, I'm sorry. How was the food supposed to get from the neighborhood grocer to the wedding at the park. The uh, that morning when we left the house, to, to everybody got together at the park. Uh, uh, I made the detour over to the, the grocery store to pick up the meat on the way to the park. Um, I had a friend that was helping, so, but yeah, so we. Did you realize that you had all of the meat? Well, when we got to the park, I thought we had it all. Um, that was the reason for the interruption in our conversation uh, where we were getting dressed, uh, was that they couldn't find a whole case of hot dogs, which is the first thing they were going to put on the grill. Uh, uh, we also had a pavilion that was set up for, you know, for, for eating and all of that. Uh, we had we have a friend who always does all the cooking. He has his own smoker and all that stuff for any any kind of gatherings that we have. Um, so the idea was that they were going to get the food on while the ceremony was going on so that it would all be ready after. Okay. Um, so um, your conversation with Mr. Severs is, is interrupted because it's realized that there's some meat missing. Yes. Um, does somebody need to go need to go get that meat? Yeah, the first thing I did was uh, I called TK is my friend's name. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the owner. This is the friend with the grocery store. Yes, the owner of the grocery, and uh, so I called him to find out if it was there. If somehow I get left, uh, he went in and checked, and he told me that it was there. Uh, so the next choice was, or the next decision was, who's going to go get it? Uh, so. Uh, Mark, I was with Mark when I made these phone calls, and he he suggested that he take me over. I didn't have my car there. Um, he had a rental from when he come into town. Um, he offered to drive me back over to TK's to pick up the... Receivers, in fact, drive you to pick up the meat? Yes. Uh, did anybody go with you? It was just he and I. In his rental car? Yes. And you said it was about, uh, you said that the grocery store where your where the meat was was about 20 minutes away from the park? Yes. And I'm guessing once you get to the grocery store and pick up the meat, that's another 20 minute drive back to the park? Yeah. It's 15. <laughs> so you had at least 40 minutes alone with Mr. Severs? Yes. So during the drive, to the store to pick up the meat, was there another discussion about his problems 
his marital his marital problems. Yes, the conversation that was the ongoing conversation continued again once we got in the car. And um, what was the conversation? What was the conversation about uh, as you drove to pick up the missing case of hot dogs? Uh, no, he, he brought up the fact again that you know he had no other choices. I again I made some different offered some suggestions, really kind of the same ones over again, but, um, you know, he, he, he said that there were no other options. He didn't have any other options to, you know, to protect his daughters than to have it, have Teresa killed. So in the previous discussion at, at the park, you said you thought Mr. Seavers wanted to have whoever this person was who was having an affair with Dr. Seavers roughed up. But now, during the ride to pick up the hot dogs, he says he that he has no choice but to have his wife killed. Yes. He said she, the only option that he had was for her to die, and then he said, I need to have her killed. Well, why is he telling you this? Well, well, I mean, well, let me ask a better question. Why was he telling you that you, he needed to have his wife killed? He, he was asking me to help him to either do it or to facilitate it getting done. Okay, so on the day of your wedding, your best friend is asking you to help him kill the wife and mother of his children. Yeah. Did you agree to help him? Um. Well, let me, let me back up. What kind of help was he asking for? He, he just, he asked me to have her killed. So, I mean. So, when when you say have her killed, was he asking you to do it yourself or get somebody to do it for him? Uh, either. Uh, he, he wanted me to have it, have take care of it. Uh, either to do it myself or find someone else. But he wanted me to be the in-between person so that there was no contact between him and if there was another person. Did you agree to do it? No. Um, Why not? Because I, it kind of caught me off guard. I, uh, I didn't really know how to answer him. The, uh, I left it with that I would see what I could do. Did you give him any more advice at this point? Uh, Mark, don't kill your wife. Don't do it. I, uh, Do you give him any more friendly advice at this point? I'm sure that I asked him if that was really necessary, uh, if he was sure, like that. I don't remember exactly what I said, but it would have that would have been what would have come out of my mouth. Now, you, at, at some point, based on what you've told us earlier, you decided to you made the decision to do what Mr. Severs was asking you to do, right? Yes. Uh, and let me ask the next question. When did you make the decision to do it? Well, the, the conversation in the car ended with, after I told him that I would see what I could do, he, uh, he told me that, that we wouldn't be able to talk about the situation on our regular phones, uh, just for privacy reasons, and there, that way there was no no logs on it. Um, he told me that uh, that when he got home, he was going to go to Walmart and buy an anonymous prepaid phone, throwaway phone, and wanted me to do the same thing. Okay, and... Um, I'm sorry, I didn't finish your answer today. Um, so once those phones, you know, when, once he got home, he, he bought a phone, and sent me the phone number. Um, I sat on it for a couple of weeks because I, I, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. Um, and then uh, in that in that area, you know, at that time, uh, I'd, act, I'd, I'd went and talked to Mr. Rogers. 
And, and let me, and before we get to your discussion with, now with Mr. Rogers, the final face-to-face -face discussion that weekend with Mr. Seavers about how he uh, somehow needed his wife to die. That happened during the ride to and from the grocery store to pick up the missing meat. Yes. And during that discussion, he also came up with a plan for the two of you to have covert communications. Yes. Now, did you actually get married on May 2nd? I did. And after the wedding, did you run right out and buy that burner phone or that prepaid phone? No. Why not? Because I wasn't, I still hadn't decided if I was going to be involved in it at all. And um, now you started to tell us that at some point while making that decision, you had a discussion with Mr. Rogers. Yeah, I, I had come to the decision that I obviously, I, I wasn't going to do it myself, that I, I didn't feel like I could do it myself or that I wanted to. Um, so the next step was to see if I could find somebody that, that wanted to be involved. Um, so at that point, um, I went and I talked to, to Mr. Rogers, uh, drove to his house and we, we, we talked. Um, so I brought up a situation where, you know, cause he, he has asked, he's done other things where he's helped me and with projects. Let me stop you right there. Okay. During your discussion with Mr. Seavers, I mean, you, you, you didn't fix, you, at this point, you didn't fix their computers for free. Were you going to get somebody to, to, or either get somebody to kill Dr. Seavers or to kill Dr. Seavers for free? No, I'm sorry. I actually skipped that part in the, in the conversation. Uh, this all happened in the car uh, along with the other choices. But uh, when I told him I would see what I could do, I asked him, you know, what kind of money was available. Um, at that point, he, uh, he told me that he had a lot of life insurance on her. Um, he didn't tell me an amount, but he said a lot. Uh, he said that him and the girls would be well taken care of and that he would pay, you know, 100000 or more to, uh, to have it taken care of. So, uh, Mr. Severs tells you that he was going to use... Uh, some life insurance policy or policies to pay up to $100,000 for somebody to kill Dr. Seavers. Yes, and he said that it would we'd have to wait to get paid uh, for a few months until the insurance paid. At uh, this time, the state would enter into evidence as self-authenticated business records. Starting first with State's Exhibit um, number 62, self-authenticating bus self business records from Prudential. State's Exhibit number 
Council's looking at, you started with 63, what, uh, 62, what else do you have? I have um, State's Exhibit number 62, for the record, uh, self-authenticating business records from Prudential. State's Exhibit number 61, Council's reviewing self-authenticating business records from State Farm Insurance. And State's Exhibit number 63, Council's reviewing self-authenticating business records of Ohio National Insurance. I believe all three were subject to a previous motion. Yes, sir. Objections are noted for the record. Overruled. We should have been admitted with the limitations given. Okay, so, Mr. Seavers, I think we left off uh, Mr. Wright. Mr. Seavers said he had $100,000 from insurance to pay someone to kill his wife. Yes. And you mentioned then that at some point you had a discussion with Mr. Rogers about this? Yeah. The, when I first talked to Jimmy, I'll, uh, uh, I didn't tell him specifics about what it was. Um, just told him that I had an opportunity if he was still looking for a way to make money. Um, told him that it was something serious, uh, you know, and that it, it involved another person. But I didn't tell him any specifics about what it was yet. All right, so you didn't tell uh, Mr. Rogers that this involved Mark Seavers, who he had met at your wedding festivities? No. All right. Um, at some point, uh, did you ask Mr. Rogers to move forward with a plan to kill Dr. Seavers? Yes. When did you ask him to do this? Well, after... It's not we'll a get to that. It's not a simple answer. We'll get to it. Okay. When, when did you ask him to do it? Uh, after Mark and I had started making the plans, um, I shared them with Jimmy. And, you know, I mean... When... I talked to him about what it was specifically before the planning, I guess, before I started sharing plans. Okay. Um, was it still May of 2015 when you asked Mr. Rogers to help you go forward with this plan, or were we now into June of 2015? Um, the first conversation I had with him was on May 17th. And um, why is May 17th, why does May 17th stand out to you? Uh, because... I had not committed to Mark whether I was going to help him or not. I'm sorry, Mr. Seavers, uh, about whether or not I was going to going to help him uh, until after I talked to Jimmy. Uh, and then I still had not gotten my f other phone uh, or the prepaid phone uh, that Mark had talked about us getting to communicate. I still hadn't gotten that because I hadn't committed yet. Um, so let me, and let me stop you then. And so between May 2nd at your wedding when Mr. Seavers came up with this plan as you, of using the, burn, the prepaid phones, and now May 17th, you still hadn't gotten your prepaid phone? Right. But during that same time interval, Mr. Seavers had gotten his phone and sent you the number for it. Yeah, he got his, I think, the day after he got home. Uh, he went and got his, uh, he had let me know that he had, he had gotten it already and that he mailed me uh, the phone number. Uh, I think it was actually a wedding card that had the phone number on a piece of paper in it. Now, you, at the, at the time, did you have your own cell phone? Yes. What was the phone number, if you can recall? 
9569581. And what was the area code? I'm sorry, uh, 314. And so you had your you had your own phone and your own way of communicating with, with Mr. Severs? Yes. But you wanted to keep your communications off book? Yeah, th that's what he said. He didn't want any communication about this done on our regular phones. And on May 17th of 2015, did you then make a decision to get your own burner phone? Yes. Uh, I, why did you get why did you uh, your prepaid phone? Why did you decide to get a prepaid phone on May 17th? Because I had talked to Jimmy and got a commitment that he was going to help. Uh, so then I went ahead and I got the phone. I think it was on the way home from Jimmy's house, but it, it, it could have been the next day. But on the 17th, I got my phone, and I sent Mark a message letting him know that, that I got it. And um, So, you did you ask to hire Jimmy to do this for you or did you hire did you ask Jimmy to help you do this well I guess it would be to help um, I, I didn't want to actually commit the murder myself but you know, it's murder so. so you at this point when you got the burner phone you were you were all in on this plan yes did you and Mr. Severs then come up with some way of letting each other know that Mr. Severs also had his own personal phone, right? Yes. Do you remember the phone number for his personal phone? Uh, it was a 314 area code as well, and the first three numbers were 239. Does the 314-239-0173 sound familiar? Yeah, that would be it. So now you, you on, on the 17th of May, you both have two phones, at least, right? Two, right. So how would you know which phone that he was going to contact you on or that, he, that you were going to contact him on? Uh, we referred to those phones as our other phones. Uh, didn't I mean, I, I've heard all kinds of terms since then, like burner phones and things like that, but I didn't know any of those terms, so we called them our other phones. Uh, so Mark had came up with the idea or th that if we texted each other, because we didn't leave those other phones on, uh, that if one of us needed to talk to the other about that, about the situation, that uh, we would send a message on our regular phones that included the word other uh, in order to let us know, hey, turn your phone on, I'm trying to call you or call me here. So if you needed to talk to Mr. Receivers on his prepaid phone, you would send a message to that 239-0173 uh, uh, number and the message would have to contain the word other in it uh, uh, somehow. Yeah, that was the, that's what we came up with. And that was your signal to him for him to contact you on your prepaid phone. Right. And did the two of you actually exchange messages between each other, you know, signaling one another to go and pick up your prepaid phone? Yeah, quite a few times. Did you tell Mr. Rogers to get a prepaid phone? No. I still hadn't told Jimmy that it was Mark. And Mark didn't want anybody else to know it was him. So I was the in-between person. Did you tell Mr. Rogers that, that you wanted him to help you kill somebody? Yeah. Yes, at some point during the, as it progressed, it, it was specific, yes. So between May 17th of 2015 and June 28th of 2015, 
What did you, with Mark Seavers, discuss on these prepaid phones? Uh, Mark came up with the initial, what he thought was the, you know, would be the best plans. He came up with two. Uh, he said that uh, the, the two places that he saw it happening would be either when she got off work at night uh, because the office building was kind of off off the main path. Um, he had uh, he'd actually had me bring up some aerial photos from using Google Maps or Google Earth or something, um, and so that he could talk me through what he was what he was talking about. But there's a side entrance to the to that main office, uh, and then you would have you have to walk up the side of the building to get to the parking lot where the car was parked. So he thought that that would be a good good place. Did Mark, did Mark Sievers at this time understand now that you had committed to being involved in this murder? Yes. So it wasn't, now it wasn't you hiring somebody to do it for him. You were going to be involved. Yes, I never told him uh, that it was another person or he told me that he didn't, he didn't care. He just wanted me to have it taken care of. So Mark Sievers didn't know that you had talked with... Mr. Rogers, no. about helping you do this. No. And then Mark Severs provided you with, with intelligence information on how you were going to get access to Dr. Severs? Yes, there was a lot of thought put into it, I, apparently. But. Did you pass on the information you were getting from Mr. Severs on possible ways for you to be able to get access to kill Dr. Seavers. Yeah, as, as kind of milestones happened in the planning process, I would share that with Jimmy and get some feedback. Now, um, you and Mr. Rogers are all the way up in Jefferson County, and or Washington County, Missouri. Yes. And Dr. Seavers and Mr. Seavers are all the way down here in Bonita Springs, Florida. Right. So how were the two of you from all the way up there going to kill Dr. Seavers all the way down here? We would have to make the trip down. Uh, the other option Mark had came up with was at the house. So both options were, were down here. And the satellite pictures that he showed you or that he helped you look at on Google Maps were of the home in Bonita Springs? Yes. And, and also of the medical practice? Yes. Was there, uh, a, a, at this point now, in May of 2015, did you know when this no. murder was supposed to happen? No. Uh, that was actually another thing that I had asked Mark was what kind of time frame that he was looking at. Uh, he just said as soon as possible. ASAP, I think, is that, that the way he actually said it. But Okay. Did you and Mr. Severs ever decide on a time and place for when Dr. Severs um, was supposed to die? Yes. How did you? How did the two of you come up with this decision for when Dr. Severs was supposed to die? Mark made that decision and told me. Um, uh, I'm not sure when the trip got planned. Uh, they were going out of town to be with her family uh, for a, I think it was a birthday party, uh, and they were leaving. On whatever day they left, Thursday or Friday night, or Thursday night. So they were going to be gone for the weekend. Um, uh, Teresa was coming home alone Sunday night, and Mark and the kids were staying an extra couple of days and said he would be back on Wednesday. So uh, he told me that that was, that was the target. It had to happen uh, either Sunday night or Monday or Tuesday. Uh, but so... Um, you didn't know that the Seavers family was going to be out of town at, at this family celebration or whatever. You didn't know about that until until Mr. Seavers told you? Right. 
Um, and you didn't know that uh, Dr. Severs would potentially be coming home by herself until Mr. Severs told you? Right. He told me all of it at the same time. How long before the family trip, you know, was it uh, days, weeks, or months before, uh, before he told you, before the trip, that he told you that the trip was going to happen? I'm not sure the exact time, but it was a couple of weeks, somewhere in that neighborhood. And did you pass along the, 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 that information to Mr. Rogers about when you'd need to be down here? Yes. How did you pass it along to him? I talked to him. Uh, most of the conversations that, that Jimmy and I had about, about this uh, were in person. Um, just, you know, Mark made a big impression on me about not speaking about any of this on our phones. Uh, Jimmy didn't have a burner phone, so my conversations with him were in person. Uh, we would meet somewhere or I'd come down to his house. How long of a trip was it from your home to Mr. Rogers' home? 20 minutes. Maybe, maybe a little bit longer, but about 20 minutes. Okay, so now you know that the um, that you've got to be in, and you, by this point now you know you have to be in Florida that weekend. At some point that weekend, that the Severs family is out of town, right? Yes. Did you have a plan for how you were going to get here? Uh, well, driving down because you can't fly without using your license and leaving a big trail. But the uh, so we were going to drive down. Uh, you're looking for more information. No, so okay. you were going to, the plan was to drive down to Florida to do it? Yes. And did you pass that information on to Mr. Rogers? Yes. Did Mr. Rogers appear to you, you said you, you spoke to him in person, did he appear to you to understand that you were asking him to come down here to kill a human being? Objection for the question. Did he appear to understand? Sustain. Did... Mr. Did you engage Mr. Rogers in a conversation where you indicated to him that he was going to come down here to kill a human being? Yes. Did he respond to you when you when you told him this? Yes. Did he appear to understand what you were telling him? Yes. So you're going to rent a car and drive down here. Um, that costs money, right? Yes. My car was actually, my wife wrecked my car, so my car ended up going in the shop. So I, that's how the rental car came about. And um, so if we heard testimony that your personal car was in, in a repair shop of some kind, but that was legitimately in the shop? Yes. So your car wasn't in, in the repair shop as part of this plan? No. Um, it was damaged pretty bad. It was drivable, but it was I wouldn't have trusted it to take on a trip. So. And did you have money to rent a car? Uh, no, I, di I didn't have any extra money. Um, but you did, in fact, rent one? Yes. How did you do that? Um, when... When Mark told me the time period that he was looking at, I uh, I told him I didn't have the money to make the trip, uh, so uh, he, he mailed me some money. Did he mail you a hundred thousand dollars? No. How much did he mail you? Uh, six hundred. Did he mail you six hundred in cash? No, it was a check. It was. It, he made it. He told me that he was going to make it appear as if it was a normal payment, so it didn't stand out for the work that I do. So it was a check, uh, a, a business check from the Seavers Medical Practice? Yes. And um, did you receive the check before you made the trip to Florida? Yes. And you, did you get the, cash the check and get the money? I cashed the check. I used 100 of it for the rental car and 500 for the trip. And when you say you used 500 f for the trip, what did you spend the money on during the trip? Uh, well, gas, food, uh, uh, did a little shopping, 
uh, just whatever expenses that we had while we were down here um, because we were we got here on uh, Sunday morning and this didn't happen until Sunday night and we left that night same night right from there so we spent the day Sunday out uh, so we were eating and you know. okay um, and did you did you did mr. Rogers know how you paid for the rental car did you tell him yes and you told him that you got money from the person who wanted you to kill Dr. Severs. Yes. Did you ever um, tell Mr. Rogers that it was, in fact, Mark Severs? At some point, uh, yeah, he, he figured it out on his own. Um, but we did have a discussion about it once that happened. Did you spend any of the remaining $500 on... Mr. Rogers. Uh, yeah, it was spent on both of us. I mean, the uh, one one of the things we did while we well, besides the food and all of that, that paid paid for both of us all of our expenses. Um, we let also me, let me let ahead. me ask you a question first. Did he know know that the money? Did you tell him that the money that you were using to pay for his expenses on that trip came from the money given to you to come down here and kill Dr. Severs? Yes. All right, so you, um, you, you, you rented a car to come down here. Was that a, 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 what kind of car was it? Hyundai, I think. Um, I can't remember the model, I'm sorry. And um, in June, actually, how many trips did you make to Florida? Well, I made two trips, but the second trip I actually don't think it started till like July first or something. Okay. But not yeah. June thirtieth, but July first. It could have been the thirtieth. That's when I'm not sure. That's... And um, whose vehicle or vehicles did you use to come during those two trips? Um, they were both rental cars. And so you you came down in, in one rental car and then. Got a different rental car to come back? Yes. Why did you come back the second time? Why did we come back? Uh, my wife also has a history with the Severs family, um, or at least with Mark. Um, uh, he actually, uh, I guess it, it's, well, the, the he, dated, he dated some people in her family, so they've also known each other since way back. But well, the question was, why did you come back the second time? Uh, because uh, Mark's brother Scott called us um, the day after and told me what happened. Uh, my wife, being the person that she is, uh, insisted that we jump in the car and drive down to help uh, in whatever way you know the family was, would need us. May I proceed? Yes. Okay. How long did it take for you and Mr. Rogers to, well, did Mr. Rogers actually join you on the trip to Florida? Yes. How long did it take for the two of you to come down here? Or to drive down here? I, I, it was like 20 hours. Did you stop anywhere and spend the night? No. Drove straight down? Yes. Um, did Mr. Ro Mr. Rogers bring anything with him for the trip? Uh, when I picked him up, uh, he had a backpack and a cooler with him. Did you know what was in the backpack and the cooler when you picked him up? Not at the time. Did you later learn what was in the backpack and the cooler? Yes. What was in what was in them? Uh, the cooler had uh, uh, duct tape, um, some latex, industrial latex gloves. Um, 
uh, I, I know there was something. for work and uh, one suit or more than one suit there's two so he had the two jumpsuits and tust industrial latex gloves duct tape and something else that you can't remember yeah and I think you told us earlier you arrived early in the morning on the Sunday the 28th yeah what time at six or Close to 6. 6 a.m.? 6 a.m., yes. Was it exactly 6 or 6-ish? I'm not really sure. It was it was close to it. And um, where, did you, where did you arrive at 6 a.m.? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, when you asked, you were asking when we got to Lee County, right, not to Florida. Is that? Yeah, Lee okay. County. Yes, it was about six o'clock when we got off the highway. Certainly, you would have arrived in the state of Florida several hours before that, right? Yeah. Okay. And um, did you use uh, any any uh, kind of a dev any device or maps so that you could find your way find your way down here driving down here? Yes. What did you use? Uh, a Garmin uh, GPS. Where did you get that garment GPS? I got it from a, a friend of mine, Jerry Levinsky. All right, so Jerry Levinsky let you have his Garmin? Yes. And that's what you use to navigate down here? Yes. Did you use it on both trips? Yes. When you arrived here in Lee County, where did you go? Uh, the first place that... Uh, we got off at the Benita Springs exit. I, I, I'm not sure of the roads and things down here, but it turned out it was the road that their house is right off of. So they live. Uh, so when we got off onto that road, which was the one that would have went to Benita Beach, uh, the house was right there. So I pointed it out, and then uh, we decided to stop and check the house out. Uh, in the planning stages of this market, given me information about the house and just wanted to make sure, verify that. And when you say we, does that mean you or Jimmy Rogers? Yes. And what information had Mr. Severs given you about the house? Uh, he had given me the alarm code, the garage door opener, you know, code, uh, uh, information about doors being unlocked, uh, so he, he had told me that he was, you know, that he was going to leave all the doors unlocked. He told me he was going to leave the alarm off. Um, it was having intermittent problems, so sometimes it wasn't arming, but he said he was leave it off. Um, he recommended that we go over the privacy fence. They have a, a large, you know, high vinyl privacy fence around their yard. So his recommendation was to go over the fence and then come through the side entrance to the garage to gain access to the house. Did you do that? No. Yeah, how, how did you get access to the house? I just used the, the door opener code that he gave me. Um, Where did you park your rental car? Uh, one block over, there's a small apartment complex. Um, parked there and just walked over. And um, did you find any exterior doors unlocked? Yes, everything was exactly the way he told me it would be, except the alarm actually was on. And were you able to, to use that code? Were you able to... Your Honor, may we approach? Okay.
Uh, take a brief recess, let everyone stretch your legs, use the restroom if they need to. Please don't talk about the case among yourselves or with anybody else who won't be with you momentarily. Roughly. Okay. We'll be in recess. Whatever the whatever the bailiffs would like to do is fine by me. If he needs to use the restroom, of course they'll take him down. Are you okay? Yeah.